All right, so we're back again and we are into, I'm titling this video Three Warlords, uh, which functionally is what they are. Uh, I'm going to, with this video, I'm going to also have linked a really great video from, I think it was PBS uh, Public Broadcasting System did a really great video series. Uh, so I'm gonna link throughout this unit uh, three separate videos that are about Japanese history uh, from the establishing of the Edo period to the Meiji restoration that we're gonna talk about later on. So that being said, we're gonna get into this. So I mentioned earlier on in the first video, the introductory one, uh, that Japan has an emperor. And Japan's emperor is kind of like the queen. She doesn't have any real power or authority over us as Canadians. Uh, but she is the figurehead of our authority. Uh, when you guys are in grade nine next year, you guys learn about someone called the governor general who basically is like a rubber stamp for any and all laws that we pass as Canadians. And she, or, well, sorry, I'm thinking back to uh, Michel Jean. He or she, whoever the governor general is, is the figurehead, is the representation. The rubber stamp represents the queen of England or, you know, it, when Queen Elizabeth decides to step down and passes it off to one of her sons or to one of her grandsons, she will uh, give that person the authority then to be the head of the dominion, the overall uh, British Empire, uh, which we are still kind of tied to. Anyways, so the emperor is kind of like that. Doesn't actually do anything when it comes to the running of the country, but is there as a figurehead of it. So for them, the emperor didn't really have as much power. Um, so the emperor, but each region under the rule of a commander called a daimyo, uh, the daimyo were constantly at war with each other, trying to increase their holdings and power. So going back to the Aztec Spanish unit, we talked about how much Ferdinand and Isabella wanted to consolidate power what we're looking at in this section is a very similar push to consolidate, bring it all together, bring all the different powers from outside and make it all mine. And I just kind of hoard power. And that's essentially what the daimyo lords are doing here. Um, so the daimyo or the provinces, the prefectures, whatever word you want to call them, uh, they, the daimyo lords were there to... Um, they were there to manage each of the provinces. They're kind of like, it's kind of like in Canada, uh, we have the queen. We also have right now is Justin Trudeau as our prime minister. And then each of the provinces also has a premier. So right now we have Jason Kenney. Our prime minister is Justin Trudeau and we have the queen. So the prime ministers manage each of the different provinces. That's right. I, did I say that right? The premiers manage each of the different provinces and are answerable to the prime minister. In this case, the prime minister is very similar to the shogun. The shogun is the guy that actually has the real power. He can pass laws and make rules that impact the entirety of Japan. Just like Justin Trudeau, theoretically, if he had a majority government, could pass laws that could impact all of Canada. Take, for example, a carbon tax. He's able to pass a law that has to do with a carbon tax and it impacts all of Canada and the di various different, you know, daimyo lords or the warlords are going to fight for what they think is best, but they are ultimately responsible to the shogun or to the prime minister. So that's kind of what we're talking about here. Now, this was not, the video I'm going to put on attached to this video is really good. It talks about the steps. It talks about like the background stuff, the nitty gritty dirty bits of like how uh, Tokugawa Ieyasu, which is the guy that kind of finishes this whole thing off, how he consolidates all his power into himself. And it's, well, you guys should know me by now. It's kind of backhanded and there's definitely some really dirty things that he does, but <sighs> me just being me in love and history, I dig it. So 
Uh, three shoguns successively. They're each warlords. They are each gathering armies. And as they defeat one part, they gather its army in and then their army is increased in size. And then they t bring that bigger army and they take over another daimyo and that daimyo's lord and his soldiers are now part of this bigger army. And so the first guy is Oru Nobunaga and he isn't really touched on too much, but he really does the bulk of the work initially. So he takes over this main central portion of Japan. Uh, Hideyoshi takes over the rest of the of Japan. Oh, it's lunchtime here. And then the last little bit of consolidation is Tokugawa Ieyasu, who finishes the job. Uh, again, it's not it's not always done nicely, and it's not always done like touchy feely, lovey dovey stuff, but it's super effective and again i just like i like the you know not so nice ends of history where someone backstabs someone and you know maybe i don't know watch the video you'll see and you'll know the parts that i get kind of gleeful at and i'm like <laughs> anyways so each of these guys have their things that they do. I'm going to go through the really kind of essential pieces like Nobunaga, his stuff, giving it over to Buddhist control uh, fits for Japan quite well. Uh, castles, all that kind of stuff. Uh, so each of these guys is doing little steps. Uh, the really important thing here from uh, Hideyoshi is this Koku. He takes the, the dominant currency and he takes it from being anything else like money or anything like that and he turns it into rice. So this, down the road we're gonna talk about the importance of various different uh, social classes in, the, in Japan. This makes the farmers essential, essential workers, which means that they don't get to take holidays right now. Anyways, uh, so everyone pays their taxes based off of rice and that gives the centralized government the ability to, you know, control some pretty big aspects of life when the dominant food source is your taxes and the government owns the vast majority of the rice you are beholden to the government uh class structure samurai this you guys have all heard of this before uh, he made a standing army so this standing army is like having a standing army for a country is the authority for the leader to do what he needs to do. He has the whole army under his authority. And when he uses the whole army as a arm with which he can, you know, dole out punishment, the government becomes that much more powerful. Um, took, oh, Okay, really cool thing. If you look at all of the ninja weapons, ninjas very seldom, I, I realize that lots of times you will see them and they've got a sword. Not reality, most of the ninja weapons, like the throwing stars and the sides and those kind of things, they're all farmer weapons because the farmers had all of their weaponry taken away by uh, Hideyoshi. And Hideyoshi, in taking that away, the commoners had to go and find ways to have like weapons but they weren't weapons they were just farming tools that they could use and they created a whole like ninjas had their had their lore but lots of their stuff is around that uh those farmer tools used to be killing tools anyways Super fun side story. Um, he tried to attack Ch Korea and China. Lost horribly to China, especially. Uh, eventually, under, yeah, to, under, the Toku, under the Tokugawa Shogunate, they do eventually attack Korea and are more successful. Anyways, um, so Tokugawa Ieyasu is the one that fin finalized the work that has been done by Nobunaga and Hideyoshi. And he eventually finalizes the unification of Japan under his shogun's authority. And yeah, this is the beginning of the Edo period. This moment when Ieyasu goes and finishes the job of unifying all of Japan 
it may involve killing a certain son, but the final act from Ieyasu to go and unify Japan under his authority is the moment that the great peace, the internal peace begins, which is an essential thing. So I'm going to call this video to an end. I just want to talk about the three warlords and their roles. And with that, we'll see you guys in a little bit.